All right, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics, and I've just been reading an interesting article by a Boris Johnson biography regarding his temper. Sonia Pennell has worked for a number of newspapers and written a biography on Boris Johnson. In the article, she explains that people who know Boris wouldn't have been at all surprised by the events last week where police were called to his house. Indeed, when I was talking about this weekend, I, I noted that the quite extraordinary defence of his behaviour and more especially the attacks of his neighbours for doing exactly what the police said they should do on the part of his supporters. The Met Commissioner even made a point of saying that they'd done exactly the right thing and everyone should do the same in the same situation. And I said at the time, there were more plausible ways to pour water on this potential fire. But the way they went about it instead, it's almost like they knew that this was very far from a one-off. Their attack seemed almost designed to invalidate any other such stories coming out of the woodwork. Now, Pennell describes Johnson as having the fiercest and most uncontrollable anger she has ever seen. Now, I don't know what her reference points are. I have to say that it's many years since I've ever seen someone close to me completely lose their temper. Perhaps she's the same and his anger is not up against much competition. But to use those words would imply that she's seen some people fly off the handle. And the odd thing about her description is that she says it happens so suddenly for the smallest of things. But in the article as well, it also describes actual examples of his rage. And it is, I would say, pretty remarkable. Oddly enough, her exact words on this were, A terrifying mood change can be triggered instantly by the slightest challenge to his entitlement or self-worth. So, if he flies off the handle if someone so much as even pokes at his ego, I mean, any other political leaders that reminds you of? I know people say that Boris is Britain's Trump, but the comparison seems to be becoming more apt by the day. Pennell has known Boris Johnson since the 1990s and thought then that his temperament was unsuited to any position of power. She's not the only one to think that. And it's especially when you consider his, his disregard for the truth as well. She describes him as bearing grudges, uh, being sneaky, using threats. Whilst researching her biography of Johnson, the author said she found people who were too scared to talk to her for fear of his reprisals. She was warned about criticising him. So that's nice to know. A man who holds grudges, doesn't like being criticised and put powerful and wealthy people in fear of him before he's even held serious power is now going to be Prime Minister, potentially. And we've seen from Theresa May just how abusive a Prime Minister can be and how much control they can exercise in muzzling the police. We now have a sociopath favourite to take that role. And, and what is amazing to me at the moment is the almost floodlight levels of such stories coming out since the weekend. This article attracted my attention more than most because of the length of time she's known him and been researching his life. But plenty of others are saying the same thing. And here's the thing. There'll be instantly people going, oh yeah, but you know they're probably socialists or Labour supporters or something like this, or Remainers, as if, as if that changes the facts of the matter, just like they were doing with the, the Neighbours at the weekend. But these articles are appearing in a wide range of newspapers, including newspapers very friendly towards the Conservative Party and, and, and indeed towards the Brexit position. His own former boss, who's known him for much longer, Max Hastings, has also talked about how volatile he is, how completely unsuitable for office. I mean, I talked about last week without even knowing about this extremely well-hidden dark side to his nature. I mean, sure, an awful lot of, of flaws are pretty obvious. It's obvious that he's a pathological liar. This week, he was, he was doing an interview and he was asked a question about what he likes to do in his spare time, you know, to wind down, a hobby. He then came up with a completely unconvincing idea that he breaks apart wooden crates and makes and paints model buses. If you watch the interview, it's really obvious he's making this up on the fly. Presumably, the real answer is something like beating sacksfuls of kittens to death with a cricket bat. And he didn't think that would go down too well with the public. I also knew that he's a complete arsehole. Easy to tell with MPs, you only need to look at their voting record. And his apparent foppishness was always obviously a facade to make him seem jovial, you know, like a bloody good bloke down the pub. But explosive anger on this level, though reported, has largely gone under the radar. Although it's a completely different scenario, it actually put me in mind of Jimmy Savile. After everything came out, what was chilling to me was the sheer number of people who knew and said nothing. It wasn't even like it was hidden. 
Not always out of callousness to his victims either, but out of fear for themselves, they kept it quiet. And it sounds like the same sort of thing is probably true of Boris Johnson here. I saw someone today writing that the issue now is that the next bus stop is possibly going to be in number 10 itself. And let us not forget who is planning to reside with him in number 10. Not his wife, but a new partner. His infidelity is legend. Purnell describes how in his, his younger days he would expect girlfriends to pay for him, to do his washing and cleaning, all the while accepting that he was not even being faithful to them. And like all of his other behaviours, he has gotten away with it. No, it's more than that. In his eyes, he's profited from it. You know, he can move from woman to woman to woman to woman and still be carried into the highest office in the land, backed by a group of people who claim to defend traditional family values. You know, this is what drew the extremely bemused looks when a Boris supporter described him as a true feminist. If that's a true feminist, then I'm sure any number of misogynists right now may label themselves as such. Good news, dear, I'm a feminist. Now clear up the mess I've just made. Last week, we all mused on whether he cheated the last round of the leadership contest to get Michael Gove kicked out. The numbers were too tight, to be sure, or even seriously suspicious, but he does have form. Dirty tricks were played in smearing his rivals, for example, when he first wanted to be selected as the candidate for Henley. In fact, the article is a catalogue of reasons why this man should never be allowed to do anything until he's been properly house trained. This man should not even be allowed to push trolleys around Tesco car park. It's quite breathtaking and I would recommend reading the article in full. Banging his hands and feet in frustration so hard that he injures himself? Deliberately enraging himself at times for when he wants to write an article. I mean, I know we all smile when we think of John Major having banged his fist on the desk of number 10, but the prospect of Boris Johnson doing it sounds much less entertaining, much more worrying. I suppose it's good in a way that Jeremy Corbyn never really corners his opposite number during Prime Minister's questions. Johnson might end up breaking the dispatch box. And it also draws attention to those who are supporting Johnson, what they think they're going to get. Given that everyone agrees that he doesn't think rationally about anything, the idea that he will think anything through is a nonsense. There will be no plan on anything. Everyone also agrees that he cares only for himself. Certainly his current partner was loudly saying that in the recent fracas. That means he's not at all like Theresa May. She didn't give a crap about the country or its people, but she did of the party. That's what her actions were for, for the party. Boris doesn't even care about the party. So Boris will do what Boris thinks is best for Boris. Boris doesn't care about the party. Boris doesn't care about the consequences. So Boris will do a thing, and if it doesn't work, he will beat up the cabinet secretary. And we didn't think we could embarrass ourselves as a nation more. We're going to put this absolute sociopath in number 10. Good luck to us all. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. Subscribe for further content. And until next time, I'll see you later.